Section 5.1, trig identities. We have the reciprocal and quotient identities. For example, sine is reciprocal of cosecant, and cosecant is a reciprocal of the sine. And then we have the reciprocal functions for the other four. Here we have tangent of theta is sine over cosine of theta, and cotangent is the same as cosine over sine of theta. Letter A, if secant of x is 5 fourths, and tangent of x is 3 fourths, we need to find sine of x. Well, uh, if secant of x is 5 fourths, then cosine of x is 4 fifths, and uh, tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. They tell us that sine is 3 fourths, and we know that cosine of is 4 fifths. So we have sine of x over 4 fifths. Now we can multiply both sides by 4 fifths. And we find out that sine of x is equal to 3 fifths. The two fours cancel out. If secant of theta is 13 fifths, we're supposed to find sine of theta. Well, cosine of theta must be 5 over 13. And here we're going to have to use a triangle. So if there's the angle, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And we have 169 minus 25 is equal to uh, this y squared. So y squared is equal to 144, so y is equal to uh, 12. So here we have 12, and uh, we want sine. So now the sine of the angle is uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of theta equals 12 thirteenths. Pythagorean identities. Let's start out with the unit circle, and the unit circle is a circle with a radius of 1. So from conex, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. That's the equation of a circle with a radius of 1. Well, x is the cosine of an angle. So we have cosine squared theta. y is the same as the sine of an angle. So we have cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Now that's the first Pythagorean identity right there. Now we can take this and we can divide by... <coughs> Oh, uh, how about divide by cosine? Divide by cosine squared. So let's divide both sides by cosine squared. And when we do that, we get a second Pythagorean identity. We get 1 plus sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared, and 1 over cosine squared is uh, secant squared. So we get 1 plus tangent squared is the same as secant squared. So here's our second Pythagorean identity. Then if we take the original one, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, and now let's divide by sine squared, sine squared theta. And we get our third Pythagorean identity. We get cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta. So this is the third Pythagorean identity. Letter A, if cotangent of theta is 2 and cosine of theta is less than 0, so cosine is negative, find sine and cosine. Well, if cosine is negative but cotangent is positive, then uh, sine of theta is also less than 0 or negative. And we have uh, cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta. So let's square cotangent which would be 4 plus 1 equals cosecant squared. So cosecant, cosecant is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. Well, if cosecant is plus or minus square root of 5, then sine is, uh, sine is uh, equal to, well, we know that sine is negative, so it's negative 1 over square root of 5, which is equal to negative square root of 5 over 5. Now, in order to get cosine, we have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, let's square this one right here, plus one-fifth is equal to one. Cosine squared theta is equal to four-fifths now. And so cosine theta is equal to, it says cosine is negative, so it's negative two over square root of five, which is negative two square root of five over five. B, find the value of cosecant theta and cotangent of theta if tangent is negative four-thirds and cosine is negative. So if cosine is negative and tangent is negative, that must mean sine of theta is greater than zero 
or positive. So we're going to find the value of cosecant and cotangent. Well, if tangent is negative 4 thirds, then cotangent of theta is equal to negative 3 fourths. And from there, we're supposed to find cosecant. Well, cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta. So let's square uh, cotangent. We have 9 sixteenths plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta. So cosecant squared theta is equal to, let's see, 9 sixteenths plus 16 sixteenths is 25 sixteenths. So cosecant of theta is equal to plus or minus 5 fourths. Uh, let's see, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and sine is positive. Uh, so it must be positive 5 fourths. Key concept, we have odd and even identities. Sine is an odd function, so sine of negative theta is a negative sine theta, and cosecant is an odd function. Cosine is an even function, so it really doesn't matter whether uh, theta is negative or positive, we'll get the same value. Same with secant, and then tangent is an odd function, and cotangent is also an odd function. We have cofunction identities. Sine of theta is equal to the cosine of theta uh, pi over 2 minus theta. So sine and cosine differ by pi over 2. Uh, so do tangent and cotangent and secant and cosecant differ by pi over 2. Let's use that information in this problem. If cosine of x is negative 0.75, find sine of x minus pi over 2. Well, we would be good if we could have sine of pi over 2 minus x. Sine of pi over 2 minus x is the same as cosine. But sine of x minus pi over 2 is equal to negative sine of pi over 2 minus x, because it's an odd function. So uh, if you want the negative on the outside, you got to take the negative of the inside. And the negative of the inside just turns that around. Well, now, really, we have this is the same as this. And sine of pi over 2 minus x is the same as cosine of x. But the negative kind of goes with it. Well, they're saying cosine of x is negative 0.75, and we want the opposite of that. So the answer is 0.75 uh, positive. Simplify 1 over cosine of x times 1 minus sine squared. Well, we know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So instead of writing 1 minus sine squared, we can write cosine squared. And this becomes cosine squared over cosine of x. Now one of those cancels out, and we're left with cosine of x. Simplify cosecant minus cosine times cotangent. Let's change everything into sines and cosines. We have 1 over sine x, that's cosecant, minus cosine of x times cosine of x over sine of x. Well, now we have common denominator of sine, and cosine times cosine is cosine squared. So we have 1 over cosine squared, or 1 minus cosine squared over sine of x. Well, 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared, just like we have here, except we would have subtracted cosine squared instead. Now this is sine squared x over sine of x. One of the sines cancel, and we're left with sine of x. Simplify cosine times tangent minus sine times cosine squared. So let, let's again, let's turn everything into sines and cosines. We have cosine x times sine over cosine, and then minus sine times cosine squared. Well, the cosines are going to cancel. We have sine of x. Well, now we can factor a sine of x out, and we get 1 minus cosine squared x. Well, 1 minus cosine squared x is the same as sine squared x, so we end up with sine to the third x. Simplify cosine squared sine x minus cosine 90 degrees minus x. Well, this is the same as cosine of pi over 2 minus x, but it just happens to be in degrees. And cosine of pi over 2 minus x is the same as sine. Well, now we can write this as cosine squared sine minus sine of x. And we can factor out a sine. So we have sine x times cosine squared minus 1. Well, that's kind of backwards. So really, this is sine of x times negative sine squared x. 
Uh, it, this is really sine squared, but it, since it's backwards, we have to make it negative. So we have negative sine to the third x. One of the techniques that we have to simplify this stuff is common denominator. So let's multiply this one by sine, sine over sine, and we multiply this one by 1 plus cosine. And we have 1 plus cosine in the denominator. Well, 1 plus cosine times 1 plus cosine is 1 plus 2 cosine of x plus cosine squared x. And then we have plus sine squared x. And that's going to be all over the common denominator, which is 1 plus cosine of x times sine of x. And we probably could distribute the sine through, but most of the time you don't want to distribute in the denominator. Well, cosine squared plus sine squared, that's 1. And then 1 plus 1 is 2. So we end up with 2 plus 2 cosine of x over the common denominator. 1 plus cosine x times sine of x. We can factor out a 2 on top. And we still have the same denominator. 1 plus cosine of x times sine of x. Well, this 1 plus cosine, 1 plus cosine cancel. And we're left with 2 over sine of x. And that is the same as 2 cosecant of x. Rewrite it as an expression that does not involve a fraction. Well, 1 plus tangent squared is the same as secant squared from the Pythagorean identity. And then we have this over cosecant squared. Well, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. And cosecant squared is 1 over sine squared. Now we can multiply the top and the bottom by sine squared. Sine squared. So those cancel out. And we're left with sine squared over cosine squared. But we're supposed to, to rewrite this without a fraction. Well, sine over cosine is tangent. So this is tangent squared. On the second one, let's multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So we're going to multiply by 1 minus cosine of x on the top and the bottom. On the top, we have sine squared x times 1 minus cosine of x. And in the denominator, we end up with 1 minus cosine squared x. Well, 1 minus cosine squared x is sine squared. So we have sine squared times 1 minus cosine. And now that's over sine squared. Well, these two cancel, and we're left with 1 minus cosine x, which is not a fraction. 